You have to shake your head in disbelief. How on earth can these things happen? And in this particular case, how could he possibly get away with it for so long? It's just unthinkable. A father who kept his daughter locked away in a secret chamber for 24 years. The poor girl was just 18 when the horror began, and over the years she had seven children. One died, three were kept prisoner down in the cellar, and unbelievably, the others were adopted by the father and lived openly upstairs as his grandchildren. No wonder the family story stunned the world. And I must add a warning. What follows contains strong adult themes. In the very early hours of the morning about a month ago, an ambulance drove up this road, bringing a seriously ill young woman to the small hospital in Eimstetten, a town not too far from Vienna. She looked like a ghost. She was seriously ill, her only relative, a mysterious grandfather. First of all, they didn't know what to do with her, and so they said, we have to find the mother very urgently. Locating the mother had now become absolutely essential, and after a few days, a woman named Elizabeth came forward and slowly revealed details of a story so horrifying it would shock the world. What Elizabeth Fritzl revealed was that her father, Josef, had kept her locked in a cellar for 24 years, and here she gave birth to seven of his children, including the daughter now on life support in hospital. I thought, I cannot believe it. This can't be true. This can't be true. It's a monstrous case, uh, because it's the own father who did this to his daughter, to his own flesh and blood. And this is where that monstrous crime happened. 40 Eberstrasse, Amstetten, a place that now ranks with the world's worst crime scene. It comes as a real surprise to discover that this house of horrors is on a very busy, very normal suburban street. Shoppers and neighbours absolutely everywhere, and yet for 24 years, no one suspected the appalling crimes that were going on in there. I mean, this is a normal family. And the neighbors were saying, oh, such a nice man, such a nice woman. And they were so nice with their grandchildren. And then you find out something like that. Austrian journalist and commentator Petra Stoiber has been following the case closely. And she's ashamed that it could happen in her country. I'm very angry. I'm angry with it because I cannot believe that uh, anyone can do this uh, to a woman. And I think uh, this says a lot about our society because no one didn't really want to go deeper and to look into the case and to ask some questions. Certainly no one questioned Josef Fritzl, an electrical engineer he and his wife, Rosemary, were well respected in this town. In truth, Fritzl was a convicted rapist who'd spent time in jail. He was a cunning, meticulous man who planned his crime years in advance. We now believe he planned his own personal empire as early as 1978 and to start a relationship with his pretty daughter, Elizabeth, in the cellar. Chief Investigator Franz Polzer is in charge of this case, and with his help, we can show you for the... For the first time, Fritzl's hidden hellhole. The cellar is reached through one, two, three, eight locked doors in all, to the final hidden entrance to Elizabeth's prison. Beyond that, Fritzl had purpose-built a prison with a kitchen, a bathroom, a living area. And beyond that, two bedrooms. It was cramped, dark, and airless. I went to see this dungeon, this prison, for myself once, and I went through it, and I was very glad to be able to leave. The environment in this room, where the ceilings were very low, 
around six foot at the highest point, the environment was anything but pleasant because everyday living, personal hygiene and so on, must have kept the level of humidity high. Josef Fritzl and Rosemary had seven children, five girls and two boys. Elizabeth was the fourth child. And one day, back in 1984, she simply disappeared. Or at least that's what her father led everyone to believe. Well, he was very persuasive, and he, he convinced everyone that his daughter did run away because she was very difficult, and even if she was a child, she was a difficult child. For the first four years, Elizabeth was alone, except when her father came down and raped her. Over the next 20 years, she had seven of his children, all born in the cellar. Michael died soon after birth, and was incinerated by Fritzl at the house. Bizarrely, of the six remaining children, three were chosen to live upstairs. The others, Felix, now five, Stefan, 18, and Kirsten, 19, were condemned to life in the dungeon. And it was down here that Elizabeth tried to give them as normal a life as possible. They were well raised, very educated, and very polite. Um, so that's really very amazing, yeah. Dr. Christoph Herbst, Elizabeth Fritzl's lawyer, was stunned by how well she and the children coped. Reading, writing. Read, read, reading, writing, mathematics, and these things. She had some books. She asked her father to bring her books and, and, and some learning materials, learning stuff. And then she tried to educate um, her children. I think they had two or three hours per day. They had just uh, to learn something. Josef Fritzl has never explained why he chose only three of the children to live upstairs. Each was taken from Elizabeth shortly after birth and placed on the front doorstep. Fritzl told his wife that their runaway daughter had simply dumped them in the dead of night with a note. Wouldn't you think with all of this going on that Rosemary, the mother, would start asking questions? Maybe she feared about the answers. Do you think she knew? We still do not know what his wife really knew. She took in three babies, mm -hmm. one after another, and accepted them. Yes. What do you think? She was, she was so suppressed that um, she, didn't, uh, she didn't raise questions. She didn't dare to raise questions, and she accepted everything for years and years. With his upstairs family totally submissive and his secret downstairs family locked away, a super confident Fritzl went on a string of holidays, like this sleazy sex tour of Thailand. Who looked after the family in the basement? Who looked after the prisoners downstairs in the basement? How did he get away with that? Nobody looked after them because um, the, he was... Um, he was a very good logistic thinker, and he, he planned everything. He had, uh, he had some rooms where they could store uh, milk and bread and all the things you need, uh, even vegetables, and yes, they were fine for three weeks. That was okay. There was one thing that Fritzl couldn't control. When one of the kids in the dungeon got seriously ill, he had to do something. And that brings us back to this hospital where things started to unravel. It was a few weeks ago, the eldest of the cellar kids, 19-year-old Kirsten, became seriously ill. And remarkably, Fritzl agreed to call an ambulance. Her first time ever outside. Doctors were immediately suspicious. The young girl was as white as a sheet from severe vitamin D deficiency, a total lack of sunlight. Police were baffled. Who was she? Where was her mother? Back in the basement, Elizabeth finally stood up to her father, demanding to go and see Kirsten. And again, remarkably, he agreed. What do you think the uh, Elizabeth said to Fritzl? I mean, what, what do you think she said to convince him? She, I, I, I think she said, uh, you will be guilty of murder or something like that. And uh, 
she was uh, she must have been outrageous and in a very very uh, precarious state of mind so i i think i think he feared that everything could explode downstairs in fact the whole situation had become so explosive that josef fritzl knew he had to move very fast to prevent 25 years of lies and deception from blowing up in his own face so astonishingly he went down to the dungeon basement and brought up elizabeth and the two remaining imprisoned children to meet the family upstairs and the way he sold it elizabeth had come home because she was so concerned about her daughter in hospital at the hospital, police began questioning Elizabeth. At first, they suspected her of being an abusive mother. But finally, 24 years of horror came bursting out. First of all, they didn't believe her because it was so, it was kind of such an, such an amazing story and, and it was like a, like a really bad thriller or something like that. Because she must have said yeah. to them, he's kept me in a dungeon. For 24 years. He's raped me several times. I bore him seven children. One died after birth. And the young policemen or women who heard this, what do you think they said to themselves? I think they needed psychological help themselves because you, you, you cannot bear something like that. You cannot listen to something like that and not be touched in a very, very deep way. What motivates a man like this? Most men who fall into this pattern of offending have, I think, two things. They have a corrupted lust and a desire, an urge for possessive control. Dr. Paul Britton, one of Europe's leading forensic psychologists, believes Fritzl planned the imprisonment of his daughter when she was very young. Men who offend against their children, their daughters, they don't begin when she's a young woman of 18. They begin when she's a child. They blame her for arousing in them illicit feelings. So what they're able to do is they're able to push away from themselves responsibility, and they put it onto someone else. But what you really have is a straightforward predatory lust. For the survivors of 40 Eidstrasse, the sad irony is that after all those years locked in the cellar, they're now locked away in a psychiatric hospital under heavy guard. Elizabeth's lawyer, Dr. Herbst, had just visited when we spoke to him. She's 42. She's been living in a dungeon since the age of 18. How does she look now? She looks like a normal woman. She has a very, she's very, very white face. She has a very white face, absolutely very pallid face, of course, because she hasn't had no sunshine or something like that but she looks completely normal just as you would expect it from someone else who is 42 years old dr herb says it's heartbreaking to see them still confined indoors the kids can't wait to get out i mean they haven't walked in the rain they haven't stood in the sun they haven't swum in a river the small boy said i've never experienced rain on my skin so I would like to experience that. He didn't see the thunderstorms. They've never walked on the grass and they've never smelled flowers? Never, never. From his jail cell, Josef Fritzl, at 73 years old, is said to be so deluded that he can't see what he's done is wrong. It's not known yet whether he'll end up in a normal prison or a psychiatric world. Either way, it's now this monster who's facing the rest of his days locked away. He was an evil man, wasn't he? Um, most people who I've come across in these circumstances, at one point or another, would wish to argue, I'm not well, uh, I must be mentally ill. But at the bottom of it, there is a perverse sexual drive. And the intention, the need, is to bend everyone else as an object, not as a person, but as an object to use in this world. And so they're bad. 